So uh, my name is Professor Gareth McKinley. I'm a professor in the Department of Mechanical Engineering here at MIT, and I head of something called the Hatsopolis Microfluids Lab, which is to deal with complex fluids, so the flow and the dynamics of complex fluids. I was always interested in fluid mechanics. Fluid mechanics is one of those disciplines that's in almost every engineering department at MIT, from aerodynamics, uh, civil engineering, hydrodynamics for naval uh, vessels. But I was always interested in very viscous fluids, and so things like polymers, uh, foodstuffs, uh, what we call complex fluids now, uh, what used to be called non-Newtonian fluid dynamics. And generally that's somewhere the chemical engineers and material scientists and mechanical engineers are most interested in. So I came here as a graduate student, uh, studied chemical engineering uh, for my PhD, and then uh, really uh, got interested in building experimental hardware, rheometers and devices for measuring some of these properties and found myself in the mechanical engineering department. So, so Newton back in the 1670s kind of put forward this idea that simple fluids flow in a way that's linear. In other words, if you double the speed, the friction that you get is kind of twice as big. So we relate that as shear stress is linearly related to shear rate. And that works well for air, it works well for water, uh, maybe for some simple oils, but for almost everything else. Uh, it's really only a leading order approximation. So most real materials like polymers or colloids or surfactant systems, if you increase the throughput, which is typically what you want to do in industry, you'll find that the level of stress that's required doesn't grow linearly. And so uh, trying to understand how that relationship uh, uh, holds, uh, what sets it, how do you control it, how does temperature affect it, how does concentration affect it, how does even the walls of the device that I make uh, my, uh, my processing apparatus out of, all those things affect what we call the rheology, that's the flow properties of the material, uh, and it's something that you come up with in, uh, against in almost all areas of industry because um, pretty much everything except air, oil and water is what we would call non-Newtonian. In other words, it doesn't follow Newton's law of viscosity. Uh, I guess uh, my group's interests at the moment are largely in food rheology uh, uh, in one area. So uh, almost everything that we touch and feel and eat in the kitchen uh, has non-Newtonian characteristics. So what we call mouthfeel, uh, in other words, how does something taste? Not so much the flavor, but how does it stick to the roof of my mouth or how does it feel when I chew it? Uh, that's an area where rheology shows up and that's somewhere where a number of ILP companies, uh, large food companies uh, um, are part of it. And then also in a very diverse area of what's called flow assurance. So trying to make sure that your material actually does flow. Um, this is something that's very important in, for example, oil and gas sectors where you might deposit uh, wax on the walls of a pipe or, or uh, clathrate hydrate on the walls of a pipe. Uh, or asphaltine deposits, all of these are things that stop flow uh, and they're all examples of non-Newtonian fluids. And so um, a lot of our work at the moment has been done through the MIT Energy Initiative as well as through the Industrial Liaison Program.